Hello everybody, I'm Brittany from AJ and Smart, and in this video today, I'm gonna to take you through the Tuesday morning from the Sprint 2.0 when all the decisions are being made. Ugh. Exciting times, really exciting moment. <clears throat> at this point you've come back your team has come back together in the morning after you've done all of your expert interviews your mapping you've built your concepts designed your concepts and, and then you took a nice restful sleep hopefully and you've all come back in in the morning together so step one is the revealing of the concepts uh, in the sprint book they call this the art museum we like to call it the Louvre so what you're gonna do here, basically what happened was the evening before everybody did their concepts and you taped them up to the wall so that the concept was actually facing the wall. So no one has seen any of the concepts yet. So the first thing you do in step one is you take your taped up uh, concepts, you turn them all over. Um, now, hot tip for a facilitator to know is that Make sure that when you're turning all of your concepts over and you're, you're putting them up for people to, to see, space them out quite nicely. Um, because people are gonna be roaming in, they're gonna be reading stuff, they're gonna be putting dots on things. So you really want them to have like a lot of space in order to do that. You want it to be a nice experience, don't ya? So that's what you should do. Okay, step two, uh, after you completed the very complicated step one, is that you are going to create heat maps. This is a really fun, fun task to give the team. You're gonna give everybody unlimited dots. Probably just unlimited should be in, in, in little bunny ears, not dots, because you are actually gonna give them dots. Uh, but anyway, okay. So what you're gonna do is give everybody on your team a nice big sheet of little red dots, and you're gonna tell them to take their time and roam around the room reading the concepts and every time they see something on a concept that they find interesting, they would put their red dots on it. Uh, now you really want to encourage people to be somewhat frivolous with their red dots uh, because you really want to actually create heat maps where you can see where all the interesting ideas are, are, are coming up. Um, so that's really important for this step. If anybody on the team is reading a concept and they have a question, this happens a lot, we very strongly encourage the team not to ask anybody around them or to, to start discussing the concept with their neighbor, but yet just very simply to write the question that they have on a nice rectangular post-it and to place the post-it right below the concept. So you put 20 minutes on the time timer, you tell everybody to use as many dots as they want, and you just play some nice music in the background, nice something peaceful, calming, and, uh, and it's a really, it's a, it's a nice moment. Any yeah. music tips? Calming music tips. Calming music. Calming music tips. We happen to have a, quite a nice playlist that we'll put in the description for you. Um, this is our workshop playlist that we play all the time. There's uh, some weird stuff in there, but most of it is like really solid. Good. Thank you, Patrick. Hot facilitator tip number two. As a facilitator, when you're doing this step with creating the heat maps, in our experience, people are usually very conservative with their dot usage. Uh, because before in the sprint, you've given them only two dots or three dots, right? So they're used to like hanging on to these dots, you know, for dear life. So really what helps a lot as a facilitator is if you actually go around and start putting like quite a few dots on things. Obviously you wanna choose things that you find interesting, um, but it's important to encourage people to be a little bit crazy with their dots. You know, so, so while this is all happening, what you can kind of say to the team, if you find an idea interesting, put two or three dots on it, right? Like make sure that you actually create some awareness around this idea that you think is interesting. That's the whole idea. So really, really encourage a lot of dot usage in this one. Step three is called the speed critique. Now, this is a part where the facilitator role is actually a little bit more difficult. What you're gonna do as a facilitator is you're gonna gather the team together and you guys are gonna walk around looking at every single concept one at a time and the facilitator is going to summarize each concept with putting a lot of focus on where all the red dots are. This can be somewhat challenging for the facilitator because you've also you haven't seen any of the concepts before either. So it's really important just to uh, try to keep it 
concise, but try to really focus on where the team has clearly put their interest. While the facilitator is summarizing each concept, you're going to appoint one person from the team to write down notes on those rectangular post-its. I really should have rectangular post-its in my hand, shouldn't I? Hold on, I'm going to We know your time is valuable. Thank you for holding. Someone will be with you as soon as possible. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, okay. While the facilitator is summarizing each concept, you're going to appoint one person from the team to take notes on these lovely little post-its. Now what they're going to be taking notes on are just the big ideas from each concept. So usually there's like three, maybe four post-it notes at the end. The person who's taking notes literally just puts the post-its directly above each concept. Also, this is the time where those questions that we mentioned before, if anybody had any questions and they put them just below the concepts, this is when the facilitator will take the questions, read the question aloud, and what they'll actually try to do is answer the question if they think they can. Now, questions are a little bit uh, tough because Sometimes the question is completely irrelevant, and that's something that the facilitator actually has to decide whether or not it's like worth trying to answer. Um, so that's kind of on to the facilitator whether or not they can answer it or not. After the facilitator is finished summarizing a concept, so they'll say, I think I've covered everything, but is there anything that anyone voted on that I hadn't actually discussed? Or is there something that somebody voted on that I didn't quite get right, or they voted on it for a different reason than I discussed? Now, we're in the sprint, we're obviously trying to keep things very anonymous. So this is sort of our way of getting around the whole like, you completely misunderstood my concept, that's not what I meant, right? So the person who did the concept, or anybody else on the team for that matter, can come and say, actually, I understood this differently, I think that they were trying to say this, right? I've got a hot tip for you. I've got a friggin' hot tip for you for this, I know, it's wild. Okay, hot tip for you for step number three. Is this step three? So, as a facilitator, you are, uh, your job in this part is to summarize all of the concepts. This is a difficult thing to do, so what we usually do as facilitators here at AJ and Smart is during the heat map session where everybody's going around and putting all their dots on, if you're the facilitator, we recommend taking that time to really kind of go in depth into the concepts and just focus on the fact that you're going to have to actually reiterate what each concept is about. So what I like to do is I go around with post-its and for each concept I'll write down what I think the big ideas are, what I see people putting their red dots towards so that I'm, you know, uh, not confused or stuck for something to say in front of the team. Uh, that's your hot tip. Step four is the straw poll. Everyone on the team is going to pick one concept that they believe we should prototype. Everyone on the team except for the decider. This isn't the time for the decider. You tell them to sit down. Their time's coming soon, but right now, it's about the rest of the team. Now, this is when you're gonna give the team five minutes to each individually make their final vote. So all the votes before didn't matter, all the red dots votes, this is the one that's like the binding vote. So you're gonna give everybody a little green dot, and you're gonna put your initials on the green dot. Uh, every team member will put their own initials on the green dot. Now, after the five minutes is up, everybody together is gonna vote on which concept they would like to prototype. Uh, another thing that's really handy to do, because after everybody votes, we're gonna have this lovely round of presentations where you're actually going to, uh, every member of the team is going to present uh, and pitch why they think a certain concept should be prototyped. So you're gonna get them to just write down why they chose this concept on an, it's all good. <laughs> you're gonna get them to write down why they chose this concept on a little post-it so that they can keep their presentation to one minute. So after the five minutes is done, you're gonna give everybody one minute to tell the rest of the team, and most importantly, the decider, why they chose this concept. Okay, hot tip for step four is uh, as a facilitator, you want to remind the team that the reason they're choosing this concept, it should be based on the sprint goal and the sprint questions. So definitely remind the team to just take a look back towards the goal and the question and make sure that their choice reflects that. Hot tip. Okay, step number five, the final step of the decision-making process. This is called the super vote. Now this one actually involves 
no one other than the decider. Ah! So what happens now, the decider has listened to what the whole team has to say, everyone has pitched which concept they would like to choose to move forward with, and now the decider has the tough job to make the final decision. Now what you do usually is you give the decider like 10 minutes, put it on the time timer, very important, give the decider 10 minutes to think about it, to look over the concepts again, and to make their decision. It's up to them whether they want to discuss with the team or whether they want to keep it completely up to themselves. That's totally fine either way. As long as they have a decision made in 10 minutes, we're a-okay. So after the 10 minutes, all you're going to do is get them to take their dot and put it exactly where they want to put it on the decision, the concept, on the concept that they have chosen. Hot tip for step number five is there are actually three different ways you can allow your decider to make their choice. You're going to actually give them two green dots with little stars on them so we know that those are the deciders, the deciders dots. And what we're going to do is give them three choices. The first thing is they can put both of their dots on one concept and be like, you know what, this whole concept, I want to prototype that, I want to test that with our users. The second thing they can do is put one green dot on a concept, a whole concept, and choose that as their main flow, and then take their second green dot and put that on a feature that they just like to test out so we can kind of take that feature and put that into the other main flow. The third thing that the facilitator can do is they can take their green dots and put them on, put one on one concept and put the other on another concept and pit these two concepts against each other. So basically you would actually have to make two different prototypes and test both of those prototypes side by side to come out with a winner. Now, what we do say is if this is your first sprint or you're new to sprints as a facilitator, um, it's actually much easier if you kind of don't allow them to do the third choice. So doing making two separate prototypes obviously is a lot more work. You also of course have to have two different user testing scenarios. So it's actually just creates a lot more work for the team. So if you're new to Sprint, I would highly recommend just doing either one concept or one concept plus a feature. That would be definitely my recommendation. That's your hot tip. Now you're gonna move on to the storyboarding, which can be quite difficult, which is why we made this lovely Sprint 2.0 storyboarding hack video that you can find here, and you just press on the little icon a little above it. You know, yeah, you know. Um, and that will walk you through that, which is super, super helpful. Now, just to give you a nice little recap of all those hot tips, hot tip number one. Make sure there's lots of space between all of the concepts when you're doing your art museum. Hot tip number two, as a facilitator, while you're doing the heat map, make sure that you're uh, reminding everybody to really be frivolous with those red dots. You really want to create an actual heat map. Hot tip number three, for the facilitators is make sure that when you're doing the heat maps that you're actually roaming around and you're really reading all the concepts and taking in maybe even writing down a few notes about the important parts uh, the, the the important parts that you want to highlight very important hot tip number four was to remind the team that when they're making their final decision the straw poll decision that they really should keep referring back to the sprint goal and sprint questions to make sure that they're not just choosing the concept that's most exciting but they're choosing the one that's actually going to solve our problem. Hot tip number five was most likely when it comes to the decider making their final call as your first sprint we wouldn't recommend doing the two concepts pitted against each other but to actually do one concept or one concept plus a feature. So those are all your hot tips for the decision-making process in the Design Sprint, a very exciting time. Uh, we hope you liked this video. If you have any questions for us, please put them down in the comments. We will, we're very active on YouTube, extremely active. Patrick just held in a sneeze, and that is, that is something that's really worth, worth a shout out. Thank you, Patty. And one question for you guys, what is your favorite part of the Design Sprint? I, I actually think this is my favorite part, like the reading of all the concepts, it's really exciting times. Anyway, again, thanks very much. Give this uh, video a like if you liked it. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, we love you guys, so thanks for watching all our stuff and we'll see you real soon. Bye.